Hello and welcome to the next video in which I will show you how you can automate your Kotlin project using git hooks on the example of Katelint with pre-commit hooks. And although this example may seem a bit specific, you can trust me that with this knowledge you will gather today, you will be able to apply many more automation to not only Kotlin projects. But to summarize, in the end of this video you will know precisely what are Git client hooks, what types of client-side hooks Git offers, how to implement an automated code check before we commit our changes and how to combine that together with Kotlin and Gradle. Without any further ado, let's get to work. So let's start everything by learning what exactly are Git hooks. In simple words, they are a way to trigger custom scripts whenever some action happens in our repository. An action can be a rebase, a commit, a merge, or a push to a remote branch, etc. And in order to run our script, we must put it inside the hooks directory inside the .git directory of our project. Let me show you the example in IntelliJ. In your case, you can use any project you already have or create a new one as long as this will be a Gradle project because we will be integrating with Gradle at the end of this tutorial. So as the first thing, let's open up IntelliJ. We can see a few files uh, with red color right here, which indicates that we already have a git uh, in this directory. Nevertheless, by default, the .git directory is excluded from the view in IntelliJ. So the first thing we'll need to do will be open up project settings right here, settings, and let's search for ignored files, ignored files here. It will take us to the file types option. So let's click on the ignored files and folders and let's find the .git directory right here. We can uh, delete that with this icon, hit OK. And after that, we can see that this pops up right here. So when we open it up, navigate to hooks, we can see that it already contains a lot of examples with .sample extension. If you would like to try any of the predefined example, then you must simply remove the .sample extension. In this tutorial, we will focus only on client-side git hooks, so what options do we have on the table? Well, when it comes to the client-side git hooks, we have the pre-commit, which runs before creating a commit, prepare commit msg, which runs before the commit message editor is opened, the commit msg, which is triggered after the commit message is created, but before the commit is finalized, the post commit that runs after a commit is made, the apply patch msg invoked during the git apply operation to edit patch messages, the pre-apply patch, post-apply patch, which run before and after after applying changes from a patch, the pre-rebase that runs before starting a rebase operation, the post-rewrite, which is triggered after commands that rewrite commit history, the post-checkout invoked after a successful git checkout operation, the post-merge, which is run after a successful git merge operation, and lastly, the pre-push that runs before a push to a remote repository. So as you can see, we have pretty a lot of client-side git hooks that we can choose between, and this is only your decision when you would like to run particular automation. Lastly, just wanted to say that pre-receive, update, and post-receive are server-side hooks, which we will not cover here. Excellent, so at this point, we know what we are dealing with today, and we can start the practice part of the KTLint pre-commit hook implementation. So as the first thing, let's navigate to the build Gradle KTS file and import the library. So let me double click on build Gradle KTS and let's add the new plugin. The identifier will be id org.jlleitschuh.gradle.ktlint and the version will be 11.6.1. If you would like to make sure that you are using the appropriate version, which is the most recent one, then you can navigate to github.com and search for ktlint gradle project. And right here, you will see the latest plugin version. Oh, I see that in my case, right now, this will be 12.02. So let's update. Let's get back here, 12.02. Now, let's click on this icon. Alternatively, if you don't see it, right here you have the Gradle panel when you can click the sync icon right here. So as we can see, the synchronization process finished. 
So right now we should see a lot of new tasks added to the Gradle. So let's open up Gradle tool, navigate to tasks, formatting. The Ktlint format is used to format according to the code style all sources, Kotlin files and project Kotlin script files. Similarly, we'll be using Ktlint check to simply check that all sources and project Kotlin script files are matching our code style. Of course, there is a bunch of other uh, tasks added, which we can see in the other directory uh, related to Ktlint. Nevertheless, we will not focus too much on the Ktlint itself today. With that done, let's see this in action. So I have some file already generated here. This is a standard hello world inserted in IntelliJ. So let me mess the indentation a bit. Firstly, let's open up a new terminal and let's start with Gradle. Ktlint check. Of course, you can do exactly the same from this window here. Nevertheless, when we will be working with git client side hooks, we will be using the Gradle command. So this is a great way to figure out whether Ktlint check, Ktlint format commands are working properly on our local machine. So let me hit enter. Let's wait for some time. And when the command finishes, we should see that the build failed. Let's scroll up a bit and see what's going on here. We can see that right here, Ktlin found code style violations and it generated a report. Nevertheless, if you scroll up a bit more, you will see exactly what file is failing. So we can see that first file must end with a new line and second unexpected indentation should be four. So let's now another comment right now. Gradle Ktlint format. This command is used to format the code according to the code style. So these two should be fixed. We can see that the indentation was fixed. When I rerun Ktlint check, this time this should be working successfully. Excellent. So at this point we see that Ktlint is working as expected and we can add our pre-commit script. To do so, I'll create a new directory. But before I do that, maybe let's close this window. Right mouse button on the Ktlint hooks, new directory. I'll call it scripts. Let me hit enter and let's put the pre-commit file here. New file pre-commit. There is no extension and we can add this file to git. Following, we will simply implement a bash script, uh, which will print out to the output that this is running git pre-commit hook and use our ktlint check. So let's start with this slash bin slash bash echo running git pre-commit hook. Excellent. Following, I would like to invoke our Gradle command, which will check whether our source code is formatted appropriately. Gradle ktlint check. Nextly, let's read the status. So ktlint check status equals dollar sign and question mark. Following, if this status is not equal to zero, then we'll return one. Otherwise, we will return zero. If ktlint check status dash not equals zero, then exit one, else exit zero, of course, we must end that with fee. So that's all. That's basically all the script we need in order to run ktlint check as a pre-commit hook. But why don't we put that directly to the .git slash hooks directory? Well, the problem is that by default, the git directory is not tracked. It contains all the information about the repository, including the repository's configuration, commit history, branches, and other metadata. And if the git directory were tracked, it would create a kind of recursive loop leading to potential issues and conflicts. So when working with Gradle and Kotlin, we will simply put our pre-commit script inside the scripts directory and configure Gradle to simply move this file to git hooks directory later. Nevertheless, as the first step, let's verify whether our script is working successfully. So let me copy it, Ctrl plus C, 
Ctrl plus V and put it inside the hooks directory. Let's hit OK. We can see this is copied. And now I will simply try to commit any message. Unversed files. Let me select everything. Some message. Let me hit commit. And right here we need to specify some name. Whatever. Codercy.com. Let's uncheck this one. Send and commit. We can see that 17 files were committed successfully with some message. Now let's get back to the main file and let's mess it a bit. This time, if I try to commit with some message too, let's hit commit. And we can see that commit failed with an error, which means that the script works successfully. Let's check out the details in console. Let's show the details. Open up right here. Let's scroll up a bit. And we can see that we are running git pre-commit hook. And right now we can see the unexpected indentation 12 should be 4, which means again, our script works successfully. Nevertheless, if we automate something in our project, it would be great to automate everything so that no developer will be required manually to copy that script because as I told previously, the git directory is not tracked. So whenever we would update our script, all developers in our team would have to copy that manually to the git directory. So one of the approaches will be to simply get back to the build Gradle KTS and we'll add a new task, the copy pre-commit hook, which will be responsible for copying this hook from script directory to the git hooks directory and later we'll connect that, that it will be run whenever a build is run. So let me close this window. That's the first step. Let's not commit yet. Firstly, let's remove the pre-commit. Okay. Do refactor IntelliJ is trying to detect whether we are uh, using this file anywhere else, which is a good feature in IntelliJ. But right now, let's get back to build.gradle KTS and let's introduce a new task named copy pre-commit hook. So, tasks, register, right here I'll specify the copy and the name copy pre-commit C, capital C, hook. Wonderful. Let's open up brackets. And firstly, we can provide some group and description the description simply indicates what this task does. The group uh, will be nothing else than a name inside our Gradle group. So, description, description equals copy pre commit hook from the scripts to the dot git hooks directory. Group equals git hooks. Following, I would like this task to never cache, so it should be run always. In order to do so in Gradle, uh, we can use the update to date when and set it to false. So, output up to date when, and right here I can specify false. Nextly, we need to specify two directories, the source and the target destination. So, let's start with from string value will refer to the root directory slash script slash pre commit. So we are selecting what we are copying and now into similarly root directory slash dot git slash hooks. Control Alt L. Let's sync the Gradle project. And right now when I open up the Gradle tool, we'll see that we have a new git hooks copy pre-commit hook. Let me run it and see whether this works as expected. So as a result, we should now see the pre-commit file inside the git hooks. And that's the case. So let me delete it once again, do refactor. Again, I don't want any developer to manually run that whenever we update our script or whenever a new developer joins the team. So as a solution, the copy pre-commit hook Gradle task will be run before the build task. So tasks, build, and right here, depends on 
copy pre commit hook we specify the name of the task and again we must rerun the sync of the project excellent so after that let's again open up the Gradle tool window let's go to the build and let's build the project as a result, we first see that ktlint check failed because uh, automatically, if we add the plugin, the ktlint check will be run as a before the build. That's the first thing. Nevertheless, the pre-commit was copied successfully to the hooks directory, which means that everything is working as expected. And that's all for this video on how to implement a ktlint check as a pre-commit git hook. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and this will be a great start for you to automate more things in your project. If you would like to see the full source code, then check out the description for this video. Lastly, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe and see you in the next videos.